Hi, this is Mark at LearnHowToGarden.com and in today's episode of The 10 Minute Gardener, we're in Betty's garden, we're in my mum's little uh, potager outside of her house and we're going to be showing you how to construct a bean wigwam. Uh, you could use this for growing beans, uh, you can grow your peas up it, you can grow sweet peas up it. Um, uh, and it was really, you know, most people I think know how to do it, but if you don't, if you've never been shown, it's a very easy thing to construct as long as you use the right knots to start it off. And the tools you need are some nice string, some sisal, this is uh, a nice natural string, some bamboo canes, uh, this is six bamboo canes. My mum is an ex-maths teacher, so we have sort of in her potager little, a couple of six-sided bean beds. Uh, these are quite small beds, but we're going to get at least six plants in here. We're going to get six bean plants plus a couple of sweet peas. My mum tends to like, and I agree with her, we tend to grow sweet peas with our beans. Uh, it adds some scent. I do think it can help in attracting uh, pollinating insects. So <coughs> the first thing to do is to prepare your bean bed. It's slightly different from a no-dig bed. It's one of the few times that I do really recommend that you dig it. Uh, and what we do here is we have double dug this small area, it doesn't take very long at all. We take uh, the top spit, which is the first spade depth out, and what I would then recommend you do, if you've got any old woolen jumpers or woolen socks, something like that, put them in the bottom of the bean trench. I know it sounds really odd, uh, but it's a really old fashioned technique that um, a lot of small holders, a lot of allotment holders used to use. They used to use something called wool shoddy and I'll just show you some wool shoddy. So this is basically um, like an old oh, oh, fleece. This is a fleece from, this is actually from an Angora goat. I have some very ancient Angora goats. Their fleece is no longer any good for making uh, my socks or anybody's mohair jumpers. But the fleece itself or any old woolen jumpers are brilliant in bean trenches. It slowly decays, it's purely organic, it's really natural. Uh, it holds water and beans are one of those things that like a water reservoir deep in the soil uh, and it also over a period of about a year gives off about four percent nitrogen there is one particular um, company uh, it's a small farm in the lake district and they still actually produce a compost using uh, composted wool and i'll put uh, a link to them um, on the bottom of this video so if you actually want to just buy the compost from them you can but that goes in first as the base layer then we put uh, into a bed this size we just put a sort of bag of manure that we've bought off the side of the road uh, then we put the soil back on top so it's sort of like a three layer cake really and we're just going to pop our beans into this but the first thing we need to do is to actually build this uh, bean wigwam so the first thing we need to do in the construction of this wigwam is learn the most important knot that you're going to learn in your gardening really. It's what we really need to know to make all of our support structures and it's called a clove hitch and it's a really simple knot for anybody who's in the sort of girl guides or the boy scouts. It's one of the sort of main knots that they teach you. As you can see across my leg we have some of the twine. The first thing you need to do is to cross your hands and then taking your finger and thumb pinch the twine either side then you uncross your hands and you've got a figure of eight and you put the left hand one in front of the right hand one and then if you actually pull this very gently you'll see that you've got like a double figure of eight on your thumb and that is called a clove fitch now if you pull either way it just tightens and it's a knot that if you put it around something um, like a stick or a mast or anything it will hold whichever way you pull it and it also means that you actually can then use these two ends to wrap round to start to secure your wigwam or if you are actually going to cross brace it you then tie another piece here and it won't fall up and down so that's the first thing to learn is this silly little knot called a clovefitch so we take our clove hitch and we just slip it over the end of one of our canes and we pull that tight. So that's absolutely secure now, which means that we can use this as the base of actually tying the top of the canes. So we take our cane, we've attached 
some string to it. If you're buying bamboo canes, they need to be sort of eight foot ones. These are about 10 foot long. These are ones I grow my own bamboo. I have a, um, quite a collection of bamboos and they're quite useful. Um, by using these <coughs> six sided beds, what's really good for growing beans is you can actually just put one of these canes, you push each cane down securely into a corner. Now they're not pushing into the centre, they're just one into each of these corners. So we take our six canes, we've put one in each corner, we take the two opposite, bring them together and just literally take the string round in like a figure of eight twice and then you take one to the side and take the string round in a figure of eight twice. And you continue doing that using the ones opposite and then the one next to it until you've done all six and they're tied at the top. And then to finish, we literally just put a half hitch in. So we go round, over and through, off, over and through again, and just off. And what you've got there is that this is tense enough to hold itself. And you've got a really, really rigid wigwam structure. And this is rigid enough to withstand very high winds, it'll withstand all the weight of the beans we're going to grow up it. Like I say, if you've got an eight foot one, you're probably going to have two foot in the ground and six feet is high enough. This one's about 10 purely because my bamboo is slightly longer. But what you're doing with this, you're increasing your growing space exponentially. It's like having another three foot by eight foot bed. You're just growing vertically. It's like putting a bed into the sky. It's one of the reasons that I really, really do think everybody should grow climbing beans, whether they're runner beans, climbing French beans, you know, borlottis. You know, it really is one of the best returns. And you can eat them as small green beans, as we've said. You can eat them as green beans out of the pod. You can eat the pods with some of them, or you can let them dry and have them in cassoulets and soups in the winter. The only thing left to do now is to actually put some string round these just to give the beans something to climb up. So I'll get some of the twine and show you how to do that. So we've attached the end of the twine with a clove hitch. And if you buy twine, always pull it out of the centre. It's been designed to come out of the centre. So there's a clove hitch on your first one. Come across at about 45 degrees. You go round, back, round again, but under the actual twine from the first time, and you've created another one of those clove hitches, and that's supported. So that when your beans grow, they can come up, and then they can grow across. And it's a sort of slightly obsessive little thing of mine, but try to go clockwise. Um, if you pull the plug in your bath, you'll find that the water always goes the same way out of the bath. It's to do with the spinning of the Earth's rotation. And a lot of plants naturally tend to like to go clockwise in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, it's a small thing, it doesn't make a big difference, but if you're being sort of, you know, if you've got to do it one way, you might as well do it the easiest. It's something that uh, my granddad always used to say. Anyway, so we come across to the next one. It's about 45 degrees, so we go round, across, behind and through that hole we've created and that will just create another clove hitch. So these are quite you know taut, they're taut enough for something to grow over and again we go across, behind, round, behind, through the hole we've created, and there's another clove hitch. My old Scoutmaster would be proud of me, I think. And we continue doing this right to the top. 
So as you can see, we've gone all the way around and we've created a spiral of string to the top. Now, you could leave it at one, but I'm going to get all Crick and Watson on you here and we're going to do it twice, you know, so you get a double helix spiral. Uh, for all of those people who haven't watched Jurassic Park, that's exactly like DNA, it's exactly like the uh, staircases Leonardo da Vinci designed in Chambord, the chateau in uh, the Loire Valley. And it basically means it's a double helix. So you start in exactly the same way on one of the other canes and do exactly the same. So we'll have literally two sets of spirals going up. Um, so we've attached it uh, and I'll just go through this and we'll show you when it's done. So we've got our wigwam. It's all strung, it's nice and secure. We, or I, well, I should say, apply a good handful of fish blood and bone. Um, as you'll know if you've watched other ones of my tutorials, I'm not that obsessive about an ounce of this or two ounces of that. And just gently work that into the top couple of inches of the bed. And then into here, we're going to put six beans. I think we're probably going to put six beans and a couple of uh, sweet peas, as I've said. Uh, we're going to put, they're all climbing French beans. My mom's quite keen on climbing French beans. So she does also have a couple of runner beans in the other bed, which you'll see as it's grown. But uh, we've got two of each of three different varieties. So you just make a small planting hole about an inch, two inches away from the actual bamboo. Now, this is the root system you want to be looking for. These beans were sown into root trainers. Um, I would strongly recommend either root trainers or toilet roll holders for beans. I tend to not sow directly into the ground with a lot of things. I think especially in a small garden, you're better to know that you've got something growing uh, before you put it in. You know, it means that you don't lose space. Then gently pop that into its planting hole. As you know, with our no-dig beds, the soil is really good. And even though this is dug, it's exactly the same. And we just wrap that gently round. Now you may need to gently tie this on initially, but if you do, remember to take that initial tie off because if not, it will get tight onto these stems and cut into them. So once you've got that round the bamboo, we'll gently water this in, we'll plant the other five, and it will actually start to spiral up these bamboos. And as it spirals up the bamboo, it'll cling on itself, they're self-clinging, and it'll actually start to grow round. And what you'll end up with is this beautiful green obelisk in your garden. So you could quite happily have this in your front garden, you could have it uh, in the back garden, in the middle of your flower border. Um, the flowers on them, I think, are really pretty. If you've got sweet peas, you're going to have scent in there as well. So I'll just plant the other five and then we'll show you how it looks when they're planted out. So in a couple of minutes, we've got our initial six beans in. So we've got uh, Cossie Violette, which is a, a bolotti. We've got Trail of Tears, which is probably my favourite bean. Um, if you look at the initial bean video, you'll sort of get the backstory to that. Um, and with these they've gone in really quick as you can see they're already sort of a good two feet 18 inches up the bamboo canes in a couple of weeks we'll be back for one of our two week two minute updates to show you how quickly these are going to grow we're going to water these in we're not going to feed them you know i bang on about this don't overfeed things you don't need to overfeed it if you overfeed it you'll get a lot of lush growth and a lot less produce and very quickly this is going to take up you know, a sort of shape of this amazing sort of um, pergola, this sort of wigwam in your garden. Uh, and I think it really is one of the best uses of space. I mean, I quite happily would have one of these in the middle of my vegetable border if I couldn't uh, grow one anywhere else. I'm that keen on sort of getting fresh veg out of your garden. So I hope that you found that enjoyable. Uh, until next time, that's Mark from the 10 Minute Gardener saying thanks a lot. Thank you very much to Betty, my mum, for letting us uh, pop this into a potager. 
uh, and we'll probably be doing a bit more filming in here uh, so you'll be able to see how in a very sort of small space she's got a little sort of eight by six greenhouse that we've got planted up you can get a lot of produce out of that small urban back garden that small space you know for you and the kids it's a brilliant thing to do it gets you into real food um, and it gets children into real food which i think is really important so that's mark anyway for now saying thanks a lot for watching and we'll catch you next time